So today we've had one of the most mind-blowing Mac gaming updates coming from WWDC 2024. This includes things like the new macOS Sequoia update, a whole bunch of native ARM Mac games that are going to be released in the very near future, game porting toolkit version 2.0 along with AVX2 support, and we're also going to be getting Windows ray tracing support as well. So today I'm going to be breaking down all of the announcements and what this really means for the future of Mac gaming. And today's video is sponsored by Mantis Sleep and I'm wearing the Mantis Sleep Mask Sound and this is no joke the most comfortable sleeping mask that I've ever used. Not only is the material lightweight and perforated for maximum airflow and ventilation, the C-shaped eye cups are extremely comfortable and can be easily adjusted to suit any face. And did I mention that this also contains razor thin Bluetooth headphones. These can be adjusted on the side using these convenient blue tabs and have a battery life of a huge 20 hours. And this is gonna be absolutely perfect for blocking out light and sound the next time that you're trying to get some sleep in a busy environment. So make sure to click the link at the top of the description to go to the Mantis Sleep website where you can find a huge range of other sleep masks which you can buy. Make sure to use my coupon code Andrew for 10% off your car order. So big thanks to Mantis Sleep for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the main content. So first things first, let's get this out of the way. We have a brand new version of macOS called macOS Sequoia. And this includes a bunch of new features, including deep integration with what Apple are calling Apple intelligence. However, personally, I think that most people are gonna be excited by the fact that we now have Windows snapping within macOS. One interesting potential gaming feature is called iPhone mirroring. This basically lets you mirror your iPhone onto your Mac. And not only that, you can actually interact with the phone using your keyboard and mouse. And this has some very interesting potential gameplay applications. Perhaps this will finally allow us to play mobile games, albeit streamed from a phone, whilst also take advantage of your Mac screen, keyboard and mouse or trackpad. Next up, we have a whole bunch of new native ARM macOS games, some of which were announced before, like Frostpunk 2. We also have new titles like Control Ultimate Edition, which along with the game Assassin's Creed Shadows, going to be the first Mac titles to support ray tracing. And these aren't the only games to be coming out. New previously unannounced titles include Dead Island 2, Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil 2, Robocop Rogue City, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, Sniper Elite 4, and what I consider a pretty huge deal, Power World. We also got the native ARM release of the game Valheim, which is running fantastically at 4K on my N3 Max chip at the balanced graphics setting. But the biggest star of this show is probably Assassin's Creed Shadows, where we finally got to see some in-game engine graphics. And not only that, the game was announced to be coming out on iPad as well. Now, this is a little bit disappointing, especially considering the fact that Assassin's Creed Mirage has an iPhone iPad release, but nothing on macOS. But in my opinion, personally, the biggest announcement out of this WWDC is the fact that we have a huge update to Game Porting Toolkit. Game Porting Toolkit 2 takes this to the next level. So that's right, Apple have dropped a brand new version of Game Porting Toolkit 2, and this is actually something that you can try out right now. Now during the presentation, not much was actually said about what has actually improved with Game Porting Toolkit version 2. Ostensibly, it's meant to be easier to get Mac games ported to iPhone and iPad. But once again, in true Apple fashion, the most interesting news and information would be found on the developer website, which I'll leave a link to in the description. And this is where Apple have really buried the lead and kept the most interesting part of the story hidden on this website, which is the fact that Game Porting Toolkit now supports ray tracing and the AVX2 instruction set. So firstly, we're gonna be talking about ray tracing. So if you didn't already know, ray tracing is a feature of the M3 chipset. And it's quite funny that we don't have any Mac games that support ray tracing yet. And the first titles that are gonna run on ray tracing on a Mac are gonna be Windows games running through the Game Porting Toolkit translation layer. And this is actually something that you can try out right now. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the official Apple instructions and opening up Crossover, which is our Windows translation layer and swapping out the D3D Metal version 1.1 for the new version 2.0 beta. Now the instructions are pretty straightforward once you've downloaded this from the developer website, which I'll leave a link to in the description. You'll need a crossover license or a crossover trial. And if people are still confused, I'll be making a video tutorial about this in the very near future. But basically we just replaced the D3D Metal and the Lib3D shared DYLib files within the package contents of the latest version of 
cross over. And once we turn the metal HUD on, we can see that this is running version 2.0 beta 1 of D2D Metal, which comes from Game Porting Toolkit 2.0 beta. You'll know that this is on because when you look at the top right hand side of the metal HUD, you'll see the line Rosetta 2 x8664 and it says version 2.0 beta 1 running direct x12. So this means that we're running the new Game Porting Toolkit 2.0. Also within the graphics settings, we now have ray tracing as an option. Now personally, I find it quite hard to see where and ray tracing is actually turned on but if you look at this patch of water under the shadowy tree when we set ray tracing on too high then we can see that the reflections are much clearer and are much higher quality. Now personally I'm not that interested in ray tracing because there's such a big compromise in frame rates when you turn ray tracing on and although the image quality with ray tracing turned on is obviously far better it doesn't really justify losing about 80% of your frames just to turn on slightly better reflections and lighting. And so I haven't had a huge amount of time to test out ray tracing on various Windows games running the crossover and game porting toolkit 2.0 beta. However, plenty of titles seem to be working, including Cyberpunk 2077. Like I said, ray tracing is turned on. It really makes the performance much worse. And this isn't really a good compromise because Windows gaming on a Mac is already a huge compromise and a sacrifice of performance. And so if you're really looking for ray tracing in your games, I'd probably be waiting for those natively um, optimized Mac titles which are coming out in the near future. But like I said earlier, I think that the biggest announcement that's been hidden here is the fact that we now have support for the AVX2 instruction set. So ever since the release of the Apple Silicon chipset, we've been missing a CPU feature called AVX and AVX2. Many games relied on this CPU support, but Apple never implemented support for this within their Rosetta 2 translation layer. That is until today. Now I can't begin to kind of overstate how important AVX2 support is and that's because there's a whole bunch of games especially recently released titles which rely on AVX support and this was the main reason why most of these games weren't running through Game Porting Toolkit or Crossover. And now that AVX2 support has been implemented, it means that the main technical barrier which stopped games like Ghost of Tsushima, Uncharted Collection, God of War Ragnarok, Last of Us, Remastered, Starfield, Alan Wake 2, etc. I've actually made a whole list of these games. Many of them could potentially work now that we have AVX2 support. Information about newly supported games is slowly trickling through. For example, Isaac, the developer of Whiskey, has managed to get Ratchet & Clank working, which required AVX. And Eman, the developer of CX Patcher, has reported that Street Fighter 6 is working as well. And just FYI, you're going to need to have macOS Sequoia installed in order to take advantage of these new AVX and AVX2 features. So anyway, I wasn't expecting that much especially considering that last year's WWDC was so excellent with the introduction of Game Porting Toolkit, but Apple have really knocked it out of the park with Game Porting Toolkit version 2 and support for AVX ray tracing and getting a whole host of brand new macOS native ARM titles ready for release soon. So let me know in the comments what you thought about this WWDC. Are you excited about Mac gaming going forward? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.